Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. Happy to be here with everyone and happy to be um, presenting on this webinar that is I'm going to be discussing how to optimize um, your journey to product management. Um, um, it's so this this webinar is kind of timely because it's that time of the year when um, a lot of us are you know doing our retrospection, uh, you know, looking back at the year, seeing what went well, what didn't go well, and trying to like make sure that what didn't go well um, goes well next year, and goals that we didn't hit last year, uh, sorry, that we didn't hit this year, are actually, we actually get to them next year. So um, it's not so much focused on the tacticals of PM and all that. It's focused more on like it's targeted more at those of us who are trying to make that transition to product management, you know, and um, have been kind of stuck and want to get some clarity going forward so that we can achieve that goal next year. And that's why, you know, it's a very good time of the year for this. And we're going to be, um, you know, going through, you know, how to do make that transition high, made my transition and giving, you know, very clear, actionable um, frameworks for how to make your own transition, right? So, um, um, that we kind of like segueing from that, you know, I'll just want to share, you know, what we will be talking about and what we will not be covering on this um, presentation. So we're going to talk about an overview of product management. You know, we're going to look at a framework for defining your transition, for creating your transition, career transition plan. Everyone has a unique background. Everyone's experience is different, right? So the career transition plan is going to be specific to your own situation. You know, and that's part of one of the reasons why we find that a lot of people don't have clarity. Um, and we're going to give a framework for that. The question I get the most, you know, is how do we, how do I make this transition? I get that all the time on my LinkedIn. And hopefully at the end of this presentation, um, you have that framework that can help you to make that, define the career transition plan and then take the necessary steps. And then useful strategies to for creating that. You know, we have a framework and then some strategies that will also help you to actually create an actionable plan. We're not going to be covering how to interview for PM roles, product management skills and all that. There is a lot of content on that already on this platform, on the on Product School. If you search um, the videos on, you know, on the LinkedIn page and also on the Product School page, you find a lot of very useful videos on um, the tacticals, I call them, of PMing, product manage, managing a product. So we're not going to be focusing more on that. And again, like I said, um, the, the the target audience for this presentation is and those of us who are trying to make that transition, have been kind of stuck or don't have the guidance or direction and want to actually, um, you know, create an actionable plan that we will execute on in the coming year. And maybe not even, even, even starting this month, right? So that's why we're focusing, it's, we're trying to define the scope of this presentation. And, and with that out of the way, I'll go straight into, you know, just introducing myself. My name is Ifan Yokafor. Um, I'm a product manager right now in AWS AI. I have um, a, a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering from Futo in Nigeria. And after that, my undergrad, I went to work for Schlumberger, um, oil service company, a global multinational oil service company. I started as a field engineer, um, flying out to oil rigs in the middle of the ocean. Um, I did a lot of deep offshore projects and also on land. Um, I would be on the rig, on the oil rig, um, you know, floating vessel out in the middle of the ocean for um, two weeks to sometimes up to a month um, doing engineering project, core engineering. And then I moved on from, from that role to becoming a field service manager. Uh, I worked in West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and then I worked in Brazil for about three and a half years, um, um, learned Portuguese, good experience, got a very good, good exposure there. And then I went from a, my MBA. So the Slumberger experience that you see on that work experience was it's kind of sandwiched between my bachelor's degree and my MBA. So I went to Yale for my MBA um, very good experience, very good exposure. And after my MBA, I joined um, um, AWS. Um, I joined it through a leadership development program um, for um, cloud expansion, basically um, getting the cloud into new new geographies. And then I moved to machine learning and AI, which is where I currently um, am. Um, I, I I summarized the, the, the um, I call that an elevator explanation. <laughs> okay, my my s simple explanation for what I do when I say, oh, I'm a product manager in AI, like what kind of, what do you do with AI, right? I explain it to my little cousins this way. I say, I have an intelligent um, software. Uh, it is an application in a web-based web service. But I say, I have, I have an intelligent system that can tell you that your server is going to crash before your server crashes. So basically, I support a product, an AWS product called DevOps Guru. You can Google it, DevOps Guru. And it's a machine learning part um, um, service that pretty much observes your applications, you know, your cloud applications, and informs you um, predicts if you're going to have uses anomaly detection mostly to find um, patterns that signify impending um, application issues. So 
that's the if your application your server is going to crash, I tell you before it kind of happens. So it's AI ML um, basically based, and then we look at very 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 intelligent and interesting space where we're pretty much looking at you know these days applications are deployed all over different across different services you know different services support most of the web applications and and sometimes you know you have to kind of like keep an eye on everything make sure everything is running my system the ai system basically sits down observing it's, it's a pretty interesting product and so far it's been a very good um so i just keep my you know we're not going into tacticals of like anomaly detection you know pattern recognition reinforcement lane and all that that's not the scope but it's you know i just keep an explanation pretty much um you know ai system um, that kind of uses an um, anomaly detection to detect um, and predict application potential application issues, and then offer rem- um, um, what we call recommendations on how to avert those um, um, pending up those potential application issues. So that's it about me, and um, I'm going to just go into and um, into the what is product management. So basically, um, product management has a lot, of, a lot. Of, there's a lot of definitions out there, right? You 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 can hear, you know, there's 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 a lot of definitions, but Generally, you will see them converge around, you know, there's a lot of like, kind of like, think of it like set, you know, intersection where everyone kind of like, no matter how the definition is, kind of converges that it's basically the, man- the practice of strategically driving development, launch, and continuous improvement of a product, right? And the continuous improvement part is very important because um, some people actually believe that once you've launched a product, well, that's no, there's a lot of work after you've launched a product to imp- add new features, to improve on existing features, to fix bugs, fix you know experiences that users are having that can be better, you know, improving the product. Um, if you launch a product and you don't maintain the product, you know, product will die. Someone else is going to launch a better one that listens to the customers and see how customer behavior is changing and adapts will knock you off your you know off your pedestal. So. It's the development, launch, and continuous improvement of a product. The key phase is generally high level, but this is generally what you will see across different um, definitions. The research phase, user research and market research. You want to know what your users want. The last thing you want to do is build a product that nobody wants. You want to know what the market for that product is. If users might want it, but how big is the market? Can it sustain the business? You know, it, at the end of the day, it's still a business that you're running. So that that's a very key um, aspect of um um, the, the key phase of the product product management. The next is the product strategy. When you finally just narrow down on, okay, there is a need here that needs to be filled. How can I build this product? What's my roadmap? What do I want to build first, right? You, there's always a ton of things you can do, but you kind of like, where do I want to start? You know, you're always the starting point, the highest priority. If your product is a two-sided platform, right? Who do I want to, like, what, what um, how do I want to start my, you know, position my product? Do I want to, focus more on one side or one side so it's a two-sided platform sorry a two-sided platform is basically um you know a market place it's so to say platform that bring on which two sides of a market interact you know thinking thinking of it you know the first one that comes to mind is uber drive drivers and riders right um do you want to be, start onboarding drivers first so that when the first few riders come on board they don't say what app is this that and there are no drivers and then they uninstall it right? or do you want to start onboarding um you know and riders first so that you know basically things strategic decisions on how you want to approach it. amazon is a two-sided platform the sellers you know and the people who come to buy you know so there are so many products these days are two-sided platform uh, google youtube is a two-sided platform right users that come to watch videos and creators these days most a lot of two-sided platforms are actually becoming three-sided platform because of advertisers so you have the like youtube for example you have the viewers one side of the platform you have the content creators on the other side, and then you have advertisers. So it's becoming even way, way more complex. But basically, all these things, all discussions happen in product room. How do you want to like, you know, when do you want to start monetizing? Like Clubhouse, I don't know if Clubhouse are still monetizing yet, but, you know, basically um, at some point they're going to start, you know, all those things that I'm sure they have a roadmap for when they want to start adding ads that will look at the topic of the room you know, and pretty much put a banner there based on what the topic of the room is so people click there. That's all going to be on the roadmap. Then execution is now, you know, when you now actually launch the product. Um, and then you include what we call incremental delivery. You can deliver everything at once. You normally would be releasing things in phases. You know, release things in phases, the most important ones first, um, and then you keep supporting, you know, the product. That's that's standard. Um, pivots, create a very important one, right? In, in the modern software development or app development or product development, you have to be flexible and flexible enough to decide to pivot, right? It's something that can happen. Sometimes may not need to happen, but it's something that can happen if you find that some assumptions that were made, or some designs that um, some designs, or some critical product decisions that were made when and when product hits the market, you find that you know they are 
were not they were no longer valid or not enough to support the business case or, or things change, right? You can actually pivot your, you know, to an adjacent use case. That happens. So as a product manager, you know, that's why I put it in blue. It doesn't always happen, but you have to know and have a plan that if this doesn't pan out well, we can convert this product, right, from, you know, an Amazon that sells to, you know, let's say sellers and buyers to maybe a wholesale, a wholesaling platform, just using them as an example, where, you know, wholesalers come and then retail, retailers and mom and pop shops come down and buy at wholesale price instead of a regular platform where every um, be to, you know, business to consumer, right, where every consumer comes to buy. Let's, let's be big businesses like, I'm just giving, I'm just being hypothetical here, but pivoting is something that, you know, you have to be ready to do as a product manager. So this is basically an overview of product management in a in a nutshell. Um, we, we're not going to go deeper into the tacticals of you know of the role of the product management role, but basically, um, what I want to show here is that the the phases of it, the skills that are needed to execute you know research, product strategy, execution, product execution, and and to pivot at skills that you can you can learn from many roles. And for that reason, the product management role for, um, can actually draw people from different backgrounds. And because it draws people from different backgrounds, we we, we find that it, there's a lot of um you know, questions going around. If you search, how do I transition to product management on Google, you're going to find so many results, right? And that's the reason why, you know, I felt it was good to like put this um, framework that we're going to share out here, right? There's so many different backgrounds. I have, pe- I know people from finance that have moved to product management. I came from oil and gas. I'm a product manager now, you know, it's, and, and people do well from different backgrounds, you know? So, so if, if everyone, that, 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 that now drives the question, right? You know, with the right strategy, all men only one can transition and be a successful product manager, right? Why then is pivoting product management challenging for many? I, I get the number of times I get those questions, you know, kind of says that, you know, there's, there's something missing, right? And for me, the reason why it's challenging for many people, you know, it's just one word, ambiguity, right? Ambiguity is just the fact that, you know, because there's so many backgrounds that people come from to product management, what then happens is that, one, there's no cookie cutter solution for everyone. And because of that, you know, and people applying what worked for somebody else to themselves is not working. And then people kind of get stuck, right? So there's ambiguity in how to navigate that process. And we'll try the objective of this presentation is to try to, to take away the ambiguity and give clarity, right? Clarity is a very big um factor in whether or not you achieve your goals, even outside product management in life. Once you're clear about the steps and the things you need to do. You start to see that even procrastination starts to go away, right? So there's this there's this comment. So basically, what we're trying to do is take away the ambiguity. And I find this comment from James Clare. Um, he's the author of a book called Atomic Habits, right? It's the book on um, habits and and you know behavior, how your habits accumulate to like kind of shape your trajectory in life. It says people think they lack motivation. What they lack is actually clarity, and this is very true, right? So people feel frustrated that they don't know what to do. And they can't move, they feel stuck. But the reason why they're stuck is not because they're not motivated to move to PM. It's because they don't have clarity on what steps to take. And again, like I said, I probably sound like a broken record now. The objective here is to give a, give a level of clarity that allows you to start taking the right steps in the right direction. This is some snapshots of some um, articles that you can just, you can Google the same keywords, you'll find them, you know, top result, top, top of your Google search results. But basically just, um, there's also a PhD study on how goal clarity um, um, kind of makes people to um, increase the likelihood of achieving your your, your goals. So um, once we, I believe that when we achieve um, a level of clarity on what we need to do for our own respective case, the framework we're going to try to share here is going to, speak to your own respect. Everyone's case is unique. And hopefully we'll start, we'll leave this um, this webinar with um, enough clarity to actually start taking action. So we're going to play a small phone game. Um, everyone bring out your phone, right? Bring out your phone and disable location services. If you're using, um, that's what it's called on Android, you know, settings, location services, turn it off. If you're on um, iPhone, um, uh, I think it's, um, let me see. Is, is it also called location services? Uh, but basically, yeah. Okay, yeah, location, um, location, yeah, location service, yes, location service on iPhone. Um, take your, um, turn it off and um, open Google Maps. So when you open Google Maps, try to put any destination. Put the put just put the near put the address of a Starbucks that is close to you, or any any place that you often go you know, around your area, right? Put the address there, um, and then try to navigate. You're going to say choose a starting point. It's going to keep telling you choose a starting point. Keep choose a starting point. Normally, it would it's it navigate from your location by default, but it doesn't know where you are. And it keeps telling you, and it's it's not going to give you 
what you see on the screen. This game is just, I mean, I think everyone on the call knows that, knew that that was going to happen, but it's, it's just it's a reinforcement exercise. The objective is to reinforce the fact that, you know, without knowing where you are and defining clearly, you know, Google Maps will, Google Maps will ask you to put, you know, the house number, the zip code and all that, you know, you put all that and then it's to draw your, your, the optimal route, right? So the objective of, it's just a reinforcement exercise so that when you leave here, right, you always remember this game you played that if you don't know where you're starting from, getting that route, the map, which is a strategy for how you're going to transition to your destination, it's almost, you know, it becomes difficult. Even for Google, you know, it, the app tells you you have to put your destination. So based on what we, you know, just again, I know that we going into this game, everyone knows that this is going to happen. Just to reinforce that concept, right? So if this the, um, 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 current position, right, and destination are critical to finding your um, drawing up the, your, your navigation or your career transition plan, right? It then means that there are three critical elements, right? Your current position, the strategy, which is in Google Maps speak, will be your route, the blue line that shows you go left, turn right. In that strategy, um, in, in navigation, in terms of car navigation, it would be apply to this role, do this, do this interview, network with this, you know. So go left, go right, go left, turn left, turn right, and all that, you know, take the first exit. That's the strategy. And then, and then that the last is your goal, where you're actually going, you know. And the, what I have below this tricky word is the challenge that I often see when people approach me to um, help them you know, talk up, to talk about career transition to product management. In the current position, they don't frame it correctly. We're going to do that a framing exercise here. The strategy, they don't have clarity. We already talked about the fact that if you, you don't have clarity, you don't even know how to act. And then the goal, they don't define the goal pro, as, you know, with the kind of, kind of precision that you need to actually know drop a good plan. We're going to do all that. So these are the things I see as a common problems um, that people have uh, or short, um, you know, kind of shortcomings that people have when it comes to defining their career transition plan. Now, what we're going to try to do is, right, is to create a plan. And as the title of this um, webinar says, um, goes, it says optimizing. There's a reason why I chose that word, right? Optimizing means you're just doing the right and putting the amount, right amount of work, not overkilling, not under, under, you know, under investing. You're putting in the right amount of work for your own situation. That's why it's optimized, optimizing. So we have to create a plan. You know, I just put the definition of two words: bring something to this and then optimize. You know, kind of optimize it, put it in, a, you know, make it efficient. Um, if you need to do more work, you're doing more. If you're supposed to do more work because your role is way off from product management and you're do not doing enough, you're going to be running in circles, right? And then you end up burning at the end cumulatively. You might actually even do more than you would have done if you knew exactly what you should do or you had a good idea of what you should do and you went straight for that amount, which might be more than what your neighbor is doing because your neighbor is um, probably in tech already and just in an adjacent role. We're going to go into what adjacent roles are. So optimizing is doing the right amount of work to get to where you're going, not doing more, not doing less, right? Going to be kind of be efficient with, with um, your resources and your effort, right? So we're going to create and we're going to optimize. That's the objective. And to do these things, you need to have clarity. How then do we have clarity to define our strategy? The next slide I'm going to show is probably the most important slide in this, um, in all this, in this webinar. It's called um, the RIG framework, right? The critical three for defining your um, your current location and defining your, your target location. The role is what you're currently doing. It's a job title, probably what's your header on LinkedIn, right? And you're, you're asking how far off is this role from product management? If you're already a product manager, then probably not, you're probably not even um, going to be on this call, right? But basically your role is what do you do. And I have an example of what a role looks like at the bottom there, right? Finance manager, automotive, North America. So if you... Um, this person, this persona here, as we say in product manager, is a finance manager, right? Um, he does maybe financial models, financial projections, projections for general models, right? In Detroit, right? So the reason we use North America generally, Canada and the US kind of like, you know, um, it's, it's the same geo. So we use North America. Now that the role of a person is finance manager, the industry is automotive. It could be um, healthcare. It could be manufacturing. It could be industrials. You know, it could be construction industry. But knowing your role, knowing your industry, and knowing your geography, very important. And you see how we're going to layer in everything else we do based on this definition. So we're going to play a small ex um, game or a small exercise. I want you to put down your role, industry, and group in this format that I have on the screen. Your role slash your industry slash your, your geography on the chat window. 
everyone, you know, it, it, this, you know, everyone here is probably trying to make a transition. And the objective is to see that, you know, you know, people come from all backgrounds. You're going to see all sorts of backgrounds, right? You know, people coming from that are already in tech, people that are, you know, maybe program managers, and people who are maybe like in healthcare, you know, people who are in, you know, I have friends who move from finance um, and some people who move from consultants and business consultant and all, you know, move to product management. So that the whole idea is to see the diversity of, um, of, of the talent pool that is trying to transition to product management. So, yeah, so the, you can see how, how diverse the, you know, the entries are, right? And that's going to take us to the next um, exercise. Now, we're going to repeat our Google Maps navigation game. But this time, I want you to get a piece of paper, um, an A4 paper, you know, and a pen. You're going to need that. So I'll just give a few seconds for you to grab a piece of paper and pen and um, draw up a table just like this um, on the piece of paper and pen that you got. This time, you are doing the same thing that we did on Google Maps, but this time, we're doing it with our, our own situation. And we're trying to see how far off we are from where we're going. So current role, target role, current industry, target industry, current geo, target geo. You will put your current role in the first, um, you know, below the role and right on current, and then you put your target role. I assume that that will be product management. You do the same for industry. This is the same for geo. Now, the last role, which is delta. I mean, everyone here knows that engineering delta refers to the difference between um, um, two two values, right? So we 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 pretty much just use one when there's a difference and zero when there's no difference for this framework. If you are a sales manager. Right in in what industry? Let me say pharmaceuticals, healthcare, right? And you're in North America. You're trying to move to um, product management in tech in North America because you're a sales manager and you're moving to product manager. There's going to be a one in Delta because there's a difference, and your industry is also different. But your geo is zero, so you you have one one zero. You're making a two point change. I um. I, this is my own, I think by now you should have your, you know, everything filled and you know how many points you're actually trying to change, how many dimensions you're trying to change, right? This is my own um, card. Uh, I was a field service manager. So when I left, I was an engineer, then I became manager, a field service manager, pretty much coordinating the team of engineers. And then I was women's product management, right? So that was a difference in the role. That was one. I was in oil and gas industry and I was women's tech. There's also a difference in the industry. That was the one. I worked in West Africa and South America. I spent time in Brazil for about three and a half years. I learned Portuguese. Amazing experience. And I also learned Nigerian. Uh, I have a lot. I worked in Nigeria and Ghana for about about the same amount, about four years too. Right. So, uh, basically, I have I, I had access to both. You know, I had authorization to work in South America. So, if I was applying to say a, start, a tech startup in South America, I would have had one on that role, one on the industry, and zero on that geo because I'll stay. So basically. I was moving to a different duo. I was moving to a different industry and different um, role, you know. So I had a three point. I was doing a three point switch. Three point switches are considered to be the hardest to make, but it's not impossible. I'm I'm on this call and I'm doing PM now in AI, right? Who would have thought? So you can also make a three point switch. You just have to know that all you're doing is three point. And this is an example of why people get stuck, right? Someone moves from healthcare. And there are product man managers in healthcare. Someone's a product manager in healthcare devices. You know, I moved to Google as a product manager. And then you are a finance person in maybe in India or something. You want to move product management in maybe in the US. And you, you know, your story, the, the, the number of things you're changing in your bio career are different. So you, you might see someone, you know, it, just your friend, right? Makes them switch. And then you're trying with what the person did and you can't, you get stuck. This is what happens a lot, right? When people try to like, and it's not, it's not for, it's no, no fault of, you know, the person who's trying to make the change. It's just not having the clarity on what you're trying to do. And this framework is supposed to give you, give us that clarity. We're going to keep going, diving deep. And at the end of this, my, my, you know, I hopefully we should have enough clarity to actually act on this and close out this goal. If it's a goal that we have for next year, right? So this is my card. And of course, everyone knows by now that the objective of doing this in, 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 in kind of a mathematical speak, right? You say the objective, it, we can't, the, the objective of a career transition to product management is to bring the delta to zero, right? You want to bring that, you know, that, that role, you want to change it, you know, to become product management. That, you want to close the gap. I call it bridging, right? So there are three things, R, I, and G, that you, you're trying to bridge. It varies. For some, people are, some people might be bridging one or two. Some people like me, we're bridging three. And I'm going to go, we're going to go together through 
bridging the R, the role, bridging the I, and the um, industry, and bridging the M. And some, not exhaustive, but some key strategies that are effective for bridging each and one, each and every one of those roles, right? So let's go to role, right? Um, bridging a role means um, you're something else and you want to move to product management. You can't, you can't underestimate the impact of training and certifications. It kind of gives you credibility. You know, a manager who sees you, your resume, hiring manager and sees that you've gone to a product, a bootcamp, PM bootcamp, a product school, you know, knows that you know what the user story is. You know, he knows that you know what an agile sprint is. You know, agile and scrum certifications are also very good. They are pretty much um, um, certifications that show that you know how to do iterative, fast um, product deployment versus the, the conventional style that we used in the past, which is called the waterfall. You know, he, the, 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 he or she knows um, what the manager, hiring manager knows that you are, you know some basic things. So it's kind of a stamp of credibility on your person. You know, this person at, at the minimum might not have done it in, in a real world scenario, but will pick up definitely from a certain level that is going to be, you know, less work than someone who is not even, you know, kind of, it kind of gives you some credibility. So training and such training and certification, very important part of bridging role, right? If the only thing you're bridging is role, that's one very good lever for bridging a role. The next is adjacent positions. Adjacent positions simply mean a role that is very close to product management. So stick, some people call them stakeholder positions. So as a product manager, I work with machine learning science. If you're a regular product manager for a regular team, you may not deal with science, but I work with machine learning. I work with software engineers. I work with sales um, marketing, product marketing. I work with um, 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 what's other team? Um, legal and you know teams that are very, very um, you know, and the circumference, you know, very adjacent to the product management role. If you if you want to bridge a role and you move to an adjacent role, it becomes easier to move to product management. I'll give an example. If if you're a civil engineer, right, or if you're a mechanical engineer, right, mechanical engineers um, build cooling systems. I worked in cloud expansion when I joined. Cloud expansion you build massive data centers for AWS, and we have engineers who design the cooling systems. You'll be you surprised at how many megawatts of power is needed to cool a data center, an AWS um, cloud data center. Mechanical engineers have to like do the whole thermodynamic analysis and put the right one to cool the amount of racks that you're going to have in that, um, system, that, in that whole data center. Now, a mechanical engineer who is working for AWS, who's working in, in construction, doing the same thing, but for, let's say, hotels, right? So mechanical engineer industry, construction, geography, North America, trying to become a PM at, at Trying to come to my role, PM in AWS in North America, is bridging two things: role and industry. It, an adjacent position to mechanical engineering, an agent will be like a program management role, right? So, if you get a program management role in AWS, right, working with a product manager, it's easier to make that switch, right? That um, the, I would say, okay, let me see the 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 mechanical engineering role might not be the best example for this, but let me use. Someone who is already in AWS and is doing still product marketing. Product marketing is basically helping the PMs to push the product out when it's released. A product marketing manager works very closely with the PM. One is product you know, discusses all the new features so they can put it out there in the market. If you're a product marketing manager, right, if in another industry, right, and you decide to, and you, if you're a product marketing manager in another industry and you move to tech, right, you're now in tech, but you're still a product marketing manager. And you're now in, and you're in North America. It becomes easier. It's called a two-step change. You take an adjacent role, still same adjacent role, at while you're changing your industry and your geography. While you're changing your industry and keeping geography and constant, then the next move is now to work with the PM for maybe a year or two, and then now try to move. So that moving moving to an adjacent position first, from wherever you are, you move to an adjacent position that is close to PM, and then move to PM is a very effective way of bridging role. Exposure jobs, all right. You know that's that's it's often called like exposure or interest jobs, like working with a startup. In, there are startups that are usually easier to get into. You know, um, in taking an internship, I took an internship in product management in during my MBA, and that helped me definitely. Um, taking volunteer jobs are also very good um, ways to like get some credibility in the role, right? And networking events are very good for knowing job. Networking events alone are not going to like get you know, but there, there are things you should have in mind. If, you, if there's a product manager meetup, you want to go. If there's a product con, you want to go. You know, they are very good um, for opportunities to actually get into, um, to get to know the ropes of, and start meeting people and start thinking and talking like them, right? So those are the, these ones are a little more, um, you know, um, kind of like um, additional to like the core 
strategies like agent positions, exposure jobs, and training and certification. Immersion is like you want to if you want to follow a podcast, there are PM podcasts out there. There are PM. I'm going to share a few um, people on PMs that you should um, follow uh, on Twitter. You know, so you want to follow people who are always tweeting about the latest product management, influence, PM influencers, very helpful to also know what's happening in the space. And then education, right? Education um, definitely helps to bridge that role. If you have an MBA, I have an MBA. Um, it's helped that a lot of companies come to MBA programs to hire people and they have in mind that these people will be um, um, coming from different industries from product management. And, it, you know, so if you have an MS in like technology management, you know, uh, business and, and techno analytics and, you know, on MBA, it, def it definitely helps you in crafting your resume and your, 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 your profile in a way that allows you to make that transition, right? So these are some of the things that are very um, good for bridging just role. And then this, this is assuming that you're bridging only role, right? Um, if you're bridging role and industry, it becomes different. But we're going to go through each of them one by one and then discuss how if you're bridging more than one. And then discuss if, if particular, particularly if you're bridging all three. Bridging industry, two-step transition is a standard. The example I gave with the construction guy is probably a mechanical engineer, sorry, is better for industry, right? If you're... If you're if, what you're, if you're doing product management in another industry, right, and you want to move to tech to do product management, it's a lot easier, right? Because you're keeping your role constant, you're keeping your geography constant, and all you're changing is your industry, right? So, for example, you, you're, let's, let's assume you're making a two-point switch. You're changing role, and you're also changing industry. Um, let's use that mechanical engineer in the construction industry who ultimately wants to become a PM in tech but still working in the US. So mechanical engineer working in construction industry, designing cooling systems, decides to move to become a product manager in tech in, in North America. First step to bridge industry, right? To, to the, 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 a good strategy will be to first of all, bridge the industry first and know that the role is intermittent. Join AW as a team that designs our cooling system. So now it's down to one. So still in North America, now in tech, but doing the role is still mechanical engineer. Once you're in a company, generally, it's easier to move within. You establish a good um, track record of performance. It's usually a lot easier to move to a different role um, in, in the same company. So it's, it's move to a different role in the same company because your performance appraisal have shown that your, your, your personal value, your, you know, everything, um, you have kind of like credibility within the system. It's not an external hire, as they call it. So that advantage plays in. So that if that mechanical engineer joins a team that does... Um, the cooling systems in AWS data centers, then the person is now in tech and um, also in North America. And then the only thing remaining to bridge is the, um, the role. And then later can make it a, a change to product management. Exposure roles are also good for industry, right? If you not, don't have exposure to tech industry and you take a, a startup role or an internship or volunteer job in the tech industry, it kind of gets into your resume. And, you know, if for all the resume screeners that look at certain keywords, those keywords become falling there because you, have, if, you know what tech is like, right? Even, if, even though it may not be product management, but you moved, you did something with tech, maybe product marketing, you know, maybe sales, but just, You've been in tech. You're not. You're not entering just the industry. That helps too. And then immersion, of course. If you're trying to go into an industry, you want to be immersed in what is happening. You want to follow the, you know, the influencers. Subscribe to industry journals. Learn the trends. Learn the lingo. You need to follow something. You know, understand the key things that are happening in technology in, in general. If you're trying to move into a tech industry, very important. I'm going to talk about that later on. And then geography, um, region geography, right? Um, this one is the very, it's, it's one of the hardest to bridge because of work um, visa regulations, right? I, I used um, the MBA to bridge geography, right? So um, normally after the MBA, you get the um, H1 and B and that authorizes you to work here, right? Uh, but it's, it's good to call out that um, bridging geography with education um, gives you a high likelihood of success. If you play, you have two years at MBA to actually go to all the, everything we've said about going to conference, doing an internship. I did all those things because I had two years in the MBA program. You know, I took courses on software management, development, man software, advanced software management um, and development, backend, front end. So I had time to actually do a lot. I had an, a, a three-month internship between the first and second year of my MBA. I went to work with a startup in Canada, you know, deploying Alexa voice skills. So, there's a lot of there's a lot that was done in that two years, so um, it gives you a high. You can you can reposition yourself very well, right? The challenges with using education to bridge geography is that um, you're going to forego salary, full time MBA, um, 
the salary, you know, and the tuition and loans and the impact on your family if you're married, moving your family to the US and, you know, and when you don't have income, you, it's something you have to consider. And the right way to estimate the foregone salary um, or the total cost in terms of monetary cost of an MBA is your foregone salary and your tuition. So if you are making, let's say, 60K a year, and for the two years, you're, you're going to count minus 120, you're going to make that, that 120K, and then you're going to take the loans for MBA. Um, you can Google average cost of MBA for two years, you know, in the, it should be about... Or maybe meet 100 and something, well, 120 to 160, depending on the school for the two years, right? Um, total, total tuition, tuition and maybe living expenses for the two years. It varies based on school, but you look without the scholarship, it's it's in the mid 100, 100 plus ish range. So it again, it, it it's it's varies from school to school, but when you add that with with the foregone salary, it looks it's it's significant. But sometimes it's probably you know, it's sometimes if you're looking to move to North America, it might be one of the only ways to do it. Um, you know and with a high likelihood of success. So it's something you have to look at carefully. Then there's a two-step transition, right? You're working for you're, you're working for a healthcare pharma company in another country that has a branch in the US. If you transition within that company to the US, you can change roles within the company, right? So that's, if you, if you want to, if you're just bridging geo, then moving within your company can be, some, someone might be here, a product manager in, let's say, Hyderabad, India, at Microsoft. You can get transferred to the US as a product manager in Seattle, where I'm based, at Microsoft. So you've just bridged geography. Maybe that might be someone's objective. Like, I want to be a PM in the headquarters where it's happening in Microsoft. And that's, uh, you know, that's an example of bridging just geography. You know, you, you just move, you know, within the same company. And then for someone who's bridging that and then also bridging the role, when you move within the same company, you can then, um, maybe a finance manager in Microsoft in India, Two-step transition means you take finance manager in Microsoft in the US, then after a while, you now move to product manager at Microsoft to US. That's how you can do a two-step transition to bridge, um, use, keeping um, the company constant and then moving your job within the, using the company-sponsored visa, of course. And then exposure um, roles are also very important, right, for bridging geography. If you've worked in an, a particular industry, um, geo, you know, having startup experience, they having volunteer experience, they can actually help you understand how to navigate work visa and all those things. It, again, it's very nuanced. You know, there are, it, some places might work, some places might not, but I know that a lot of people um, that, you know, maybe quit their job, maybe burn out, travel to another country, do startup there, you know, come back, reposition, and then go back there because they like the place and they now know how to navigate immigration there and they join a, a get a proper, you know, like joining maybe, maybe same startup or, you know, that's, it, it helps to bridge in geography. And then self-sponsored immigration. Some countries have um, highly skilled immigration programs. I think Canada has something like that going on. That's another way that you can bridge geography. So these are the main levers, right? Now, how you, you have to mix and match them based on your situation. Now that we've talked through the main levers for bridging each and every one of them, it's, we can't go through every combination of what everyone is bridging. You know, there's so many different variations, but you know that if you're bridging all three, you know the things you need to do. You know, there might be commonalities that were called out across all three. You just cancel out, just, you know, you don't have to apply them three times. That, that's not, but you understand what, basically now that you can actually look and say, I'm bridging this and this. These are the things I should do. This, I, I'm going to drop this one because I don't think it's going to work for my case, but you have some level of understanding on what the task is ahead. Having said that now, the next thing now that you, now that you have the, um, you know, the information, I believe, and you have, you know, when I, when I explain this to people, I often hear, wow, it, now it makes a lot of sense now. And people start saying, it kind of makes sense. Now I see how far off I am. Now I know what I need to do, right? The next step is actually to make a plan. And there's this phrase that I'm going to put up here that really... Um, affected how I, you know, how I look at things in terms of life goals and all, and all that. And you know, it's basically big goal, no plan, right? Um, this is Sharan. He's a productivity coach and he has this um, model where he talks about big goal, no plan. A lot of people have big goals, but no plan for the goal. Like I'm going to be a millionaire by X years before I turn what? No big goal. What's the plan? And then people get kind of like deer in headlights. For every goal, they have, you have to have a plan. So even for this career transition goal, it's a big goal. I'm going to be, I want to be a PM in 2022. What's the plan? If you don't have a plan, you're leaving it to chance. But we'll see whether that works. But big goal, no plan is a, is, a, is a phrase that really changed how I pursue life goals. And it's very effective. Always keep it in mind. Big goal, no plan. It's, it's not, say, it, it's a sarcastic comment here. It's not saying, it's not saying, he's not saying that you should have big goals and no plan. He's basically saying that people have big goals with no plan, which is not a good thing. So you basically have to make a plan, you know, a detailed, you know, process how you're going to do it. And um, that is something you have to do based on what we've shared, right? If you are bridging geography, you have to sit down and say, 
okay, I work in Mexico, for example. I work for GE and I know I want to end up in, can I transfer first, same role I'm doing to make um, GE US, work for two years, you know, and then move to product. GE has product managers. You be, they have a lot of digital products, healthcare products, right? Let me move to the US because I want to do product management in the US, you know, maybe ultimately move to tech, but if I move from my, my um, role and I move to GE, maybe manufacturing manager, I move to manufacturing manager in GE US and I do it for two years, you know, I get, you know, maybe I get a green, however it works out, you know, then I, I can transition to this team. I know someone who has made it before, moved from my manufacturing manager in their office in, say, Detroit or wherever, wherever city to manufacture to product manager in our office in San Francisco or wherever it is the product managers do the product design and all that stuff. Still within GE. This is a kind of plan that everything we've discussed should help you to start drawing up. So you draw up this plan, you know, whether it's going to be a two-step change. Okay, I'm too far off. Let me go into Google first as a sales manager. Then when I do sales for two years, I'm a sales manager right now in Verizon. So I can be a sales manager in Google in their 5G division. Um, Google has Google Fi. That's an, if you're a sales manager in Verizon, I move to, want to move to Google Fi sales, very, very possible move. Then when I get in there, you know, the, the product I'm supporting, I'll try to, posi- to position myself, build a relationship with the team to now become... So now you, now you know, it, one person can't um, draw up the plan for you, but you kind of see where this is going, how you make those moves. You know you're bridging. You know what you're, every, every move you're making, you should know which one you're bringing a delta to zero. Is that move going to close the gap on geography? Is it designed to close the gap on, on role? Is it designed to close the gap on industry? So going from Verizon to Google Fi, it's going from telecom, telecommunications to tech. So you know that you're, by doing that, you're changing industry, but you're, you're changing industry, but you're keeping your role the same. You're a sales manager before. You, keep, you're keeping, you, you, you can't change all things at once in some cases. So you do it step by step. Let me change industry first. Now my food isn't done. I'm in tech. I'm in Google, um, but I'm still doing sales. Now the next thing is now, let me move and become a PM. That kind of plan is something you have to sit down and draw, put timelines to it, right? And that takes me to the next thing. You have, you have to think. Everything I've been doing now is brainstorming. Think, use the current target worksheet to think through what gaps you need to bridge. Understand, okay, I need to bridge this and this. Or I need to bridge this, this, and this. They make a plan. You know, look at the bridging, um, and, and the, the strategies we shared for bridging role, industry, and Joe, and come up with a plan to close each and every one of them, right? Now, the important thing, I'm going to get into the baby self steps, right? Break down the actions in baby self steps. The next thing is going to be to act. You know, you have to act on a plan. If you need to enroll in courses, start enrolling those. If you need to read PM books, start reading the PM books and blogs. If you need to start doing mock interviews, which you should start doing even while you're still bridging the gap. Mock interviews are like, you have to be doing. The more you interview, the better you get at, at it. And the more you start to understand things that actually you'll be doing on the job. Networking. If you're going to go to business school, like I did all school, master's degrees, you start preparing. If you need to write GRE or GMAT, but basically, now you know if the only way for you to get to where you're going is cool, and you now start not, you now have the clarity to know that oh, I need to write the GMAT, I need to start applying now. So you start seeing how everything starts becoming clear once you use this framework for tracking your progress. I recommend an app called Notion. Uh, Notion is really good. Notion the SO. They have a mobile app. They have a web platform. You can actually create different tracks. You can create a track for geography, create a track for role, and all the actions you're taking to bridge roll will be under the roll track. You know, you keep knocking them off. It's, it's an amazing app. For me, it's done a lot for me this year. When I started, since I started using it, I, I can see the difference in terms of my life goal plan and all that stuff. So Notion is the SO, very good. I recommend you use it for tracking each of the, um, the three RIGs that you're, you're bridging. Put, put it in Notion. Um, you can have other ones. It's not, it's not a must, but I, I recommend that app. So think, plan, and then act. Now, the baby self steps that I, I'm going to go and we're going to round up very quickly, but the baby self step is very important, right? Lay out the plan like you're two, like you're two, you lay out the plan like you're talking to your two year old self, right? This is another thing that helps people to be able to actually close out tasks. The, the guy on the left there is a fairly big investment banker or whatever, but a big guy, you know, very busy guy, has on his Notion app or whatever, app, read 2 p.m. books in Q1 2022. That goal is going to be there. I'm not, not saying for sure, but the likelihood of having a, a meeting a high level goal like that, you know, the way our brain, brain works is that brain, as, as complex as the brain is, um, whenever there is a task to be done that is involves it, reading a book is a lot of like, sitting, you know, self-discipline and sitting down to actually buy the book and read it. It's, 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 it's mentally tasking, right? As easy as it sounds. 
um, if whenever the brain meets a task that is mentally tasking, the brain, um, as small as it is, it takes one quarter of your oxygen. So it's a very, very um, conservative organ. What it does is it shuts down from, you know, it minimizes the amount of work it, so it pushes that thing out, right? That's how people start to procrastinate. But if the brain sees a task that looks very easy, it jumps on it. It, it, it doesn't, that part of the brain that triggers the, okay, let me save myself from this complex task that is going to take me uh, that's going to take up all the oxygen again. It's, it's kind of an evolutionary adaptation because the brain is, you know, it takes up so much oxygen, so much energy, right? Um, and so it has to protect itself from unnecessary stress. So that read two PM books in 2022 is scary, kind of, it's kind of scary. And what happens is that that person um, who kind of sees himself as an adult and knows that as an adult, I should be able to do this, will put most likely miss that goal. But if you say, add the top five PM books on Amazon to your cart, that's a baby step. You're talking to yourself like as if you were a two-year-old kid. That's an easy thing to do. Go to Amazon, you know, you know, top five, just search the first five that come out, you add them to your cart, right? The next thing, pick the one with the highest review count. Re- highest review, number of counts of reviews means that it's a popular book. Maybe good may not be that good, but it's just a popular book. There's a reason why it's popular. You add that one to your, you know, shortlist that one. Okay, this one, pick the one with the highest rating, may not have... That's 1,000 1, reviews may have 4.9, whereas the one with 1,000 reviews has four stars, right? So that one with the highest rating means that it kind of signals quality. You see how you've used basic frameworks. You know, I use a lot of frameworks in decision making it, and it helps me to move on things, you know, a lot with more clarity and more speed. Even if I end up with the, not the best two books, at least those two, the, the likelihood of getting um, if two good books from this, there's, there's no how that I won't get a book that covers 80% of what, what I need to know, you know, by doing this, right? So, it's not about being perfect. It's about being able to explain how you arrived where you are. It gives you, it gives your brain a kind of clarity that allows you to continue moving. So pick the one with the highest rating, 4.9, but fewer rates. I pick those two. And I order those two books. I know I have the book with the highest review count. I know I have the book with the highest um, number and rating, right? The one, like I said, the one with highest review count might be 4.2. Whereas the one with highest rating might have only fewer reviews, but 4.9 or 4.8. Other book, book, and then kind of also put a plan. Week one, I'll read the intro. Week two, I'll read chapter one. Like that, like that. You know, that is you talking to your baby self, like you're babysitting yourself. Your brain won't, sh- won't kind of like push away the task the moment you see that read two b- PM books in 2021. That's scary. And I'll, g- I'll quickly give another example of that. And that's um, baby self steps, you know, um, you know, this it, same thing, networking with PMs, you know, read two books in Q2, network with PMs, right? Networking is part of it. You want like, Talk to people in this. The same guy with the, the big guy there, you know, this kind of like busy guy just puts this on his, this thing. You know, I, I, try, I, I try not to expect too much of myself and that helps me to actually, you know, stay productive, right? Um, that if you have it like this, you don't have clarity. Again, it's, um, this is an ambiguous task. This is not how to break down tasks for your baby self. So if you were talking to you, my, if I was talking to my two-year-old self, I would tell my, <coughs> my two-year-old self to register for product con. <coughs> Sorry which by the way is the product schools conference on product management. Very amazing conference. I've attended it virtually a couple of times. Register for product con, right? Pen down to instructors that are going to speak, right? Write their names down or somewhere, save it to notepad. Two weeks to product con, add two of them on LinkedIn and introduce myself. Hey, I'm this, this, this. I'm going to be, I'm excited to see you speaking, you know, at product con. I'm, I'm going to be there, you know, I can't wait to hear your experience as a PM in whatever, right? Um, may, may respond, may not respond. It's fine, right? But you, you, and, and the moment you start checking off this acts on Notion, you start to get a kind of a confidence boost that you're actually moving and it actually helps you to continue to keep going. It's kind of a reward mechanism. You start to form a habit of the reward for closing out the task is to do more so you get that reward. There's a whole psychology, you know, psychological study on that. So you track down, two of, the next step is track down two of them during product con and set up um, coffee. Like right? you meet two of them physically, talk with them. Hey, I was what I added you on LinkedIn. This is step by step. You're talking to your baby self now, right? Send follow up notes after the product con. Hey, we met, you know, thanks for your this, 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 blah, blah. You know, we had coffee the next day after the conference and before we flew out of wherever the conference happened, San Francisco. Um, said two months later, hey, I'm now doing this. You know, again, once in a while, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, keeping in touch. It helps. You know, you never know when the person might see something or see an open. Hey, by the way, there's this. You should know. You should apply. It's a good rule for your based on what we discussed and that kind of thing. And this is a more, um, this is an example of baby self steps that will get you to your um, goal more than just network with PMs. And I can almost bet that because this is me, I would just have <clears throat> when I'm networking, network with PMs, like or something a bit, maybe a bit more detailed, but nothing like what I have on the right. And that's um, that what I have on the right actually is what has helped me 
a lot to get to where I am. You know, just general stuff, you know, whether I was transitioning to AI, you know, break it down step by step by step by step like a baby and be knocking them off small by small, small increments that are almost negligible. Registering for product con is five minutes. You know, pending down to instructors is two minutes. You know, uh, add them on LinkedIn and introduce yourself is another five minutes, but you're moving. You're moving versus network PMs and your brain says, what is that? And your brain shows that, okay, I'll figure out what that is. Let's do it later. That's the problem. Uh, so recap, this is, um, you know, we're running out of time, but basically um, I'm going to just recap what we did. And, you know, I, I really hope that at this point, the concept of big go no plan. And again, these are not product mind. These are just general stuff, you know, but they apply in this goal, goal setting for product management, right? The concept of the big go no plan, the baby self steps, you know, and the RIG framework, those three things, you know, get, get, getting clarity based on role industry group, um, Planning with be, and breaking your plan down with um, having a, even having a plan, creating a plan. So people just want to they just they brings they just freestyling through navigating. If they see someone, they network. If they don't see someone, they don't network. If they see a course, they are, they tell me they don't see it. You know, you can't you can't really. It might work, but that's luck. So first of all, have using the RIG to understand where you are and where you're going and see the gap. So coming up with a plan, and then. That's a big goal, no plan. You don't want to have a big goal with no plan, right? So that's where that big goal, no plan. I want that to stick in your head. And then the third one, um, the um, baby self step. Break your, break your steps, the steps in your plan to baby. Talk, talk to yourself as if you're, I won't say dumb, but you're as, if you're very, as if you're a child, right? So your brain doesn't push those things away out of, you know, this is a very big task. I don't know where to start. Ambiguity shuts down your brain, right? And makes things, you know, kind of scary. So once the brain sees that big task, I don't know where to start. Brain kind of like retreats and wants to push that task to later on. Whereas if it sees um, register for product con, okay, Google product con. I think it's the end of the. I don't, I don't know. Um, I think product school will share when that is, and it makes it a lot easier. So this is um basically, um th these are basically things I want you to take away from this, and hopefully you're able to sit down on your own, and take away the ambiguity, have clarity, use the RIG framework to analyze your gap and create a plan, then think, you know. Have a plan. Don't be Mr. Big Go No Plan and act with your plan broken down into baby steps. Finally, there are some people you should follow on Twitter. If you want to be a product manager, I would say um, this guy, Marty Kagan. Google, just maybe take a screenshot of this. This is very, um, you should, um, these four people here are good. You know, Melissa Perry, she's a head of HBS, Teresa Torres, very amazing product manager. These are thought leaders in the industry. You want to know them. Search Medium for product management articles. Um, of course, follow Product School. They release a lot of lovely articles. They have there's a free book from Product School that is very good also, right? So, but Search Medium for product management articles. There, there are a lot of people that have written amazing stuff. There's a, there's a, a browser add-on called Pocket, getpocket.com, that I have on my browser. Anytime I see an interesting article, I just click on Pocket. It saves it there, and I put a tag. If it's PM related, I put it there. If it's blockchain related, I'm a blockchain optimist. Um, I believe that blockchain is going to influence the developing world more than AI, more significant than AI in the next 50 years. So I read up a lot about blockchain, even though I do AI at work. So my nine to five is AI. My five to nine is blockchain. Um, but basically, I, I just put a tag, blockchain. If it's um, PM related, I put PM. If it's AI related, I put AI. You know, if it's personal development, I just put, it's, a, it's an amazing app. Then on, over the weekend, when I'm not, you know, scrambling to get things done at work and, you know, I'm not so busy, I just go there, click by tag, and I see all the art lovely articles. On, uh, so I think you should use Pocket, very good app. There's also a mobile version. Whatever you sync on your add-on on the browser, syncs on your mobile. So use the Pocket browser add-on to save as many PM articles as you can. Uh, but follow these people on Twitter. You can look for their LinkedIn profiles and follow them. And if you want to follow me on LinkedIn or send me a note or add me, you know, um, yeah, I, I try to respond to, you know, I can't guarantee, you know, it gets busier times here, but I try just to just search you find your account for AWS so you go with the link, um, you'll find me, you know, so feel free to add me. I, I, I can't guarantee that I can respond to every, I get a lot of, uh, I may be backlog, but I'll try to get to, you know, to share whatever tips I have with anyone here. And that is the end of my presentation. We're just um, pretty much a long one, but I kind of feel like um, because of how many times I get this question, you know, how do I, how do I? You know, if people have, if you have the clarity um, on how to like do this framework, I can't believe like a lot of people are going to make the move maybe to sign up for product school for next year, you know, you know, maybe to start preparing for an MBA, but having that clarity, you know, I, I hope that you have it. I hope that I haven't wasted um, your time, you know, and I hope that this gives you the clarity that you need to take that step. Um, thank you, everyone. 
Um, again, my name is Ifan Yoka for um, Product Manager AWS. Happy to be here uh, as we continue on this journey to make the world a better place and by releasing amazing products. Thanks, everyone, and see you. See you around. I'll be around um, for questions if you have any briefly. Um, and um, yeah, cheers. Bye. <laughs>